Today I'm back with this uh, 2013 Toyota Sienna. Uh, if you've seen my vi previous video that this uh, van has a problem with the rear differential, abnormal noise. So today I'm going to be repairing that. I'm going to be replacing the uh, uh, input bearing for the uh, uh, electromagnetic coupling assembly of the rear differential so as you can see here I have the car jacked up already and I have a OTC hub grappler kit uh, that I'm going to be using to uh, remove the bearing from the uh, coupler a Stanley socket set uh, this is going to be my first time, so I'm not sure exactly what I need, but roughly 12 mil millimeter, 14 millimeter socket set or so. And it's the main thing. So I got this uh, from Toyota dealer, the bearing, radio ball bearing, part number 90363-95007. And this uh, dust deflector. Part number 41252-44010 And this oil seal I'm not sure I'm going to be needing it or not But I just uh, bought it just in case Part number 90310-54003 And this, uh, this is a must Seal packing 1281 And Jack stand, <coughs> flashlight, and penetrating oil, a uh, couple of bungee cords for the uh, holding up the propeller shaft, uh, work light. That's it, and uh, let's get started. So, all right. So, I spray some uh, penetrating oil. To the uh, those nuts or bolt and bolts that I am gonna be removing yesterday, so I let it sit for overnight just to uh, make the make removing those bolts and nuts uh, easier. So, okay, first I'm gonna remove that uh, protector plate underneath the differential. I'll show you from inside. So I'm gonna remove this protector plate. Uh, hold on by uh, four bolts, 14 mil. Then I'm gonna drain the differential fluid. Then I'm gonna remove this propeller shaft and hang it on the side with the uh, bungee cord. Then we're gonna remove this. Uh, this is the problem part here, the uh, radio ball bearing inside this uh, coupler uh, is bad. So I'm going to remove this unit and bring it outside and replace the bearing. Yeah, so, okay. Uh. Um. 
All right, place is down. I'm gonna leave this board there. Okay, put this on the side there. All right, so here I'm using the 10 millimeter uh, hex head socket on a half inch drive. I'm gonna be removing that uh, fuel plug here and drain plug there to uh, drain out the fluid, differential fluid. Okay, I just have to be careful not to strip this head. So make sure the socket is fully seated. Okay, crack that one open. I'll just uh, leave it like that. And loosen it, loosen that one and pull out this one completely. All right, it's crack open. Here now, hopefully, I can drain well, most of them out anyway because right now the rear end is higher than the front. All right, so I'm gonna put this block in with a new washer. Uh, you can use the old one if you like, but I prefer to uh, replace the washer. So, make it tight, and you can tighten this one as much as you can, or just torque it to 39 Newton meter. There you go. All right, uh, that's torqued up. And we'll leave this one here later when we refill it. For now, okay. Now remove this vent hose and the connector on the top here. Okay, flathead screwdriver, push it in here and try to push the hose out. Yeah. Okay, the vent hose is out. Okay, now the connector. All right, flat hat screwdriver. Yeah, pushing down on the locking tab. And yeah, I put my flat hat screwdriver in here, pushing down the locking tab. And there they come off. All right, that's that. Okay, I need to jack up the front so that I can be, be able to rotate this uh, propeller shaft. All right, as you can see now, I had I have four wheels in the air. I just jacked the, the front one slightly up in the air so it can rotate the tire. And the whole car is on the jack stands, on like four jack stands. Okay, and then, so which means I'm out of jack stands, so I'm using the, I'm using the jack to support the uh, coupler right there so so it doesn't drop that when I remove this bolt but okay now I'm gonna removing the propeller shaft okay use my screwdriver flat hand screwdriver hold it there nah. one two I guess I have to use the screwdriver to rotate it. There.
floor. Now, I need a rubber mallet to knock this one loose. loose. I'm going to remove the stud to make it easy. All right, I got two 12 mil open wrench. I'm going to lock these nuts up. Like that. All right, so I'm going to try to remove the stud. There we go. That's better. One out. Well, I'll do the same for all four. All right, so now this one is free. Okay, so I'm gonna put this one that side. All right, next I'm gonna use the wire press to clean around this area. Then remove these four bolts, two on this side and two on the other side. There. There. All right, so, time to put a jack under now. Break the sealant. Yeah, it's coming. One thing is coming slowly. Yes, yes, coming out, all right, all right, now we can put the jack out, okay, and forward, okay, and off, there we go, put this baby out, see if it's still good, I believe. That always seal in there. I don't know. Still, oh, that washer. Keep it in there. Yeah, always seal still okay. Okay, I'm gonna clean this one up later before I put it back in. This always seal in this and this washer I'm gonna stay like this. Alright. Alright, so I got this coupler clean up now. Excuse me. So uh, try to clean up all the dirt around the unit. And uh, look, you can hear. See how bad that is. And we really shake it too. All right. Yeah, let me flip it around. Look at it. See, just by touching on it, it's so loose. And I notice, see this uh, grommet? is out of place so I don't know what happened when I uh, pull it out or 
I think it's look at the seal here. Yeah, so it things like this from the factory. It pop out probably during installation or something, but look at it. There's the rubber seal and still sitting over there by the body there. So what I'm gonna do next is uh, I'm gonna remove this connector and remove the wires and uh, push it back through this hole and uh, push out the uh, the coupling assembly. All right, so I'm using this uh, snap ring pliers. Uh, I'm gonna try to push the connector out while I undo the uh, lift up the uh, locking tab here and squeeze it to push the connector out. There. So now same thing with this on this side. There. Yep. So the connector, there you go. So as you can see. I got a connector out. So just locking fingers right here. And then lift that up and push it out from the uh, bracket. Now, next, I'm gonna put out the terminal of the wires from the connector. Before I do that, I'm gonna mark which wire goes where. So if you have the connector, Facing this way with this one, this with this orientation, the pin on the left, the first pin will be number one. So I'm gonna mark that pin. And before I remove it, I'm not sure it, it matters either way, but yeah, I'm gonna put back the same way that I removed. So number one with, with the tip. Yeah, another way to do, another thing is that you're gonna pull that uh, white wedge inside the connector there and with a pair of pliers and the, uh, use the connector tool, the needle sharp uh, connector tool like this or your tiny uh, flathead screwdriver, lift up the locking tab inside and, uh, and remove the wires. Break it out of the way. There for now. There. So, you put that one out. Put there. Yeah, so there's two locking fingers at the bottom there, one on each side. Push down a locking tab. Uh, I think my Yeah, so I got one out. One out, and do the same thing for the next one. Depends on what orientation you uh, have on your connector, have this way, so I push that on the locking tab, then pull out the wire. Voila, so I got the wire out. So remember this is my orientation. The left one is my number one. Uh, electrical tape there. Okay, put that on the side. Now, see how this one here? I don't know. Well, at least I don't have to break the. Uh... Yeah, ceiling. 
for this hole because you got a grommet and a feet of 20 feet of wide through now one at a time get one out two out okay you gotta be careful around this area yeah yeah so don't want to break this wire all right out of my uh, hop grappler kit I can only use this and this and this I'm gonna pound it out with this fine power sledgehammer and I just put a block two blocks of wood there and one down here to cast that uh, coupler when it falls down all right and make sure it's only on the the housing itself let's see Just on the outer housing only, not on the coupler. One. One. Two. Yeah. Okay, out. Okay, this one just fall off. This is the dust deflector. Garbage. Okay, this is the bad part. Okay. I'm gonna leave this on the side. Do my pin marks still there? I'm gonna clean that up later. Now this. Okay, so I'm gonna take that out and compare. Let's see, part number on this one. Yeah, SIM 95D SF01. 95D SF01. Let's see this one. DSF01. Yep. All right, leave that there. I'm gonna try to pull out that one out. I'm gonna push this out from this side. I'm gonna grease the inside here so make it easier to come out. Yes. There you go. All right, so, oh, a little bit rusty in there. I need to clean the inside too, before I put a new one in. But first of all, let's compare the new one and the old one. Oh, ha. Huh. This one got the rubber or rings on the outside here. The new one doesn't have one. And look at that. Nice and quiet. No play at all. And this old one. There. 
bad. Okay. All right, so you can see here, this is the old bearing. I uh, got the rubber O-ring there. The new one, apparently the new one doesn't have one. But exactly the same part number. Now I'm gonna clean around this area with some cleaner. And inside this a housing, a couple of cover. Yeah, clean that off. Clean that off. Then now we're gonna start the bearing. All right, so now I got my uh, coupler cover or cleaned up inside and back. And so as a coupler, clean around this area too. Uh, so now I'm ready to install the uh, bearing. So since the new bearing doesn't have uh, the rubber seal there, so I'm gonna put a beat up uh, sealant, 1281 sealant around here, and uh, I'll set it back in. Like that, uh, set it in. All right, trying to hammer it down now. See if this works. Oh, perfect. And this, of course. So that's how I need to go down. Yeah, maybe I could use this thing. Yep. Yeah, it's out of the way. I'm gonna wipe up this uh, excess sealant there. I just run my fingers all along, just like that. 
and we seal it off. All right, that would do. Now I need to put this one in here. Some oil around here. Skin. Okay, and this one I'm gonna go over the spin around right, okay. Like that. Okay, put some grease around there. Now, I put that on. I'm gonna wear that. All right, so I got the uh, coupler back in. Now, dust deflector back in. Now I'm gonna try to put the connector back. So, again, this. Number one with a black tape, go to uh, this way. Just hear that click, and it's locked this side. Lock, put back the wedge. Uh, this way, this way, uh, this way. There you go. Now bracket. This go now. Um, oh yeah. This way, maybe connect uh, going that way. Okay. Set the connector back in. All right, next, I'm gonna clean this one here, put a beat up uh, sealant. But first, I'm gonna go clean the other side. All right, so I'm gonna clean this area, uh, remove these old sealants here, and clean area good and uh, put a coupler back in. I'm gonna clean up this rusty spot here. I think that's where the water come in from the electrical uh, wire grommet there was IA. Oh, I mean, uh, not seated. All right, just clean that up and uh, yeah, put the uh, coupler back on. All right, I got a sealant apply to the coupler now. I'm gonna try to set it up. Is the ball ready? Four bolts. Uh, okay. Maybe. Jeff. 
Okay, according to the sealer instruction, I have to leave it uh, dry for an hour before I can feel the fluid and dry. That was my gun. Torque this board to uh, 42 Newton meter. Two, I think. Yeah. Forty two. Forty two. Forty two. All right, clean up and wait. All right, so it's been an hour already now. So now it's time to fill up the uh, uh, differential fluid. So here I'm using this uh, differential gear oil, ALX GL575W85 Toyota differential oil. Uh, it needs about half a liter, 0.5. So I'm gonna use this pump. I'm gonna fill it uh, through that filler block there. Stop. Oh, 
new washer and I bought this one to 39 newton meter As you can see, I have the propeller sharp back on. Uh, torque these nuts at uh, 37 Newton meter. And the uh, protector cover, protector back on. And bent hose connector. All right, and then moment of through now. I'm gonna start the engine and put into drive. You see the noise still there? Electromagnetic uh, copper radio ball bearing replacement. All right, that's it, guys. Now you have it. I just uh, a fifteen, a uh, hundred fifty dollars repair uh, versus a fifteen hundred dollars. Repair. Okay, I'm gonna shut it out now. I think I'm gonna remove the uh, protector and clean now uh, the uh, overflow fluid dripping down right now. All right. Thanks for watching, guys. See you next time. I'm gonna be doing the uh, uh, strut replacement on a 2009 Toyota Rav4. Stay tuned. Bye for now.